Hi, I'm Phil Hadia, Vice President of Operations from Electrical Power and Safety Company, Rapsco. This video is about NFPA 70E and how that electrical safety standard might apply to you in your situation. Have you ever been visited by OSHA? Well, sometimes when it rains, it pours. When it comes to electrical safety and NFPA 70E, we get faced with two looming questions. One is, does this even apply to me? And the answer for the most part is yes, unless you fit within a series of exclusions within NFPA 70E. The other question is, we hire an electrical contractor. Look, shouldn't the electrical contractor take care of this? And the answer is to a point, but you still need to provide them information so they can work safely themselves. One of the fundamental concepts within the NFPA 70E standard is the idea of creating an electrically safe work condition. Within the standard, there's an eight step process. Lockout tagout, step number six. Here we're getting ready to get some work done. We want to be safe in the process. When doing electrical work, a proper risk assessment is vital. In this situation here, by looking at the arc flash label, we can tell that we're working on 480 volt equipment. And we can also tell what the approach distances are for people in the area. It includes the incident energy level, and also it tells us what type of PPE we need to wear if it's an arc flash hazard area. So using this information, the electrical worker is able to properly get themselves ready to work on the equipment. NFPA 70E allows for certain types of interaction with energized equipment. In this case, Josh is measuring voltage on a machine drive. This is allowed because he has the correct PPE on and he's done a proper risk assessment. He did this in order to understand the voltage and the arc flash and danger that were associated with the work he was doing. Based on that risk assessment, he was able to put together a proper hazard protection boundary to keep other unauthorized people out of his work area. So how did this all happen? It all started with an arc flash incident energy analysis. It's an engineering study of the plant power system that allowed Josh to be able to select the correct PPE, select the right testing instruments, and also determine what type of hazard boundaries needed to be set up in order to keep unqualified electrical workers out of his workspace. All of this gets wrapped up in the NFPA 70E standard, and it's the way that we keep electrical workers safe here in the industrial environment. EBSCO, electrical power and safety company. Safety, diligence, collaboration.